So in today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating three stable diffusion web UI extensions to aid your 3D to AI workflow. Also special thanks for Redditor Far Driver 29.4 for the resource update and the creation of the 3D editor within Stable Diffusion. And starting with my favorite one, which is going to be the text to 3D to image, to image to 3D, sorry. Uh, I'm going to be showing you each and every single one of those. And you're going to install them by copy and pasting the repository in this section right here, then reloading the UI. I've already done all that, so I would like to show you the 3D, uh, sorry, the text to 3D editor right here. Basically, I just input a simple prompt and it will come up with a simple 3D model. And at this prompt, I used Anime Girl. And luckily for me, I think my job as a 3D modeler animator is going to be safe for another couple of months. Well, but this is amazing. It kind of looks like a humanoid doll of an anime girl. I think with more training, we're going to see something better. So let's stick with something like a donut for now and see how we can use this in the other editors. So I'm basically going to download it and upload it to the 3D editor that uh, for driver made. Then I'm going to use this donut that I've generated and downloaded within Stable Diffusion inside this 3D model editor. Add in some different backgrounds, like change the background a bit. Then add this to a control net model. And look, I can generate even more donuts with this. But okay, let's get serious. This is not really exciting, generating donuts. I mean, there's uh, seven part tutorial on how to do that in Blender. So let's do something with the 3D pose editor. I'm going to start up my 3D pose editor and load in the 3D model, which comes with the extension. Just press right here. And I've got to say the 3D model is fantastic. So props to whoever made this. Also, thanks a lot. I'm going to be linking the repositories in the description below, so make sure to thank all the people who made these extensions. Okay, basically I select whichever part of my character that I want to rotate. Here, it's already wrecked for me. Then I can press on rotate down here. And I can give it something like a weird pose. Let's try how this is going to look like with control net 1.1. Let me give her a silly pose. Right now she's looking like she's making the contact gesture from Bloodborne. So let me change something with her. Now this is even weirder. It's getting me a while to get used to the AI to the UI, but I gotta say this is fantastically made. And as for the 3D editor that Far Driver shared, and I believe he's the one who made the extension, it's honestly fantastic. I mean, it was very intuitive for me to start using it. Okay, and I can even control the fingers and the digits, which is amazing. And I really want to see how this is going to come out in control net because, you know, stable diffusion is weird with the fingers, but I have a good feeling about this. Let's see what else I could change. Yeah, I'm satisfied with this. Yeah, let's check this out. Let's see how this is going to look like in control net. And I'm going to use control net unit number two for this because I've already set the donut to number one. Okay, let's see how this is going to look like. I'm going to use the canny model and the depth model. One each time. These are my two favorite models to use when I'm posing a character. Sometimes open pose does not work exactly as imagined. And I actually have another tutorial on how to use open pose with Blender, which is an extension within Blender, sorry, an add-on within Blender. 
which is very helpful. So be sure to check it out. And I should have removed the gimbal before going to control net because I have a donut in my prompt and a gimbal above her hand, which gave me this. So let me remove the donut as a prompt and leave the anime girl. She's still holding a gimbal. Let me remove the gimbal from uh, the extension. But this is looking kind of fire. I mean, this is exactly what I just posed. I know this is kind of old news, but I just wanted to keep you guys up to date with it. And honestly, I have been a bit behind when it comes to 3D to AI workflow extensions. So it was very helpful of the editors who shared these resources for me. I want to do and I want to be useful in return to you guys. So let me see what else can I do with these extensions. For example, I'm pretty sure you've seen my previous workflows. If not, go back and see them. They're very interesting on how to make isometric rooms and furniture using 3D and AI. Let me see how that could be made easier. So this is a scene that I made in Blender, a very simple silhouette scene. I did not add any materials whatsoever to this small scene. And I'm going to use this to make something uh, for interior design, like something like a scratch idea basic idea, a draft, sorry. And I'm just choosing how am I going to have this silhouette so I can feed it into control net. Basically I modeled every single thing in this uh, screen sh screenshot here or this viewer here. I had some inspirations here and there. Anyway, I'm going to have this inserted into control net and I'm going to take the MLSD and the depth in Canny as well and see how it's going to turn out. Once I'm done choosing the colors around the model that I uploaded, I'm going to use a architecture based, an interior design and architecture based checkpoint which I've used also in the past in my previous tutorials. I'm going to make a simple isometric room, interior design, something modern. Let me come up with a very simple prompt and let control net do the rest of the work. Because basically that's the point of the ready to AI workflow. And I should pose, I should control the snapshot a bit better. Let me change it up. This is fine, but honestly for a first generation this is not even half bad. Considering that I did not put any effort whatsoever into the prompt, nor did I even use any LoRa's, I think this could in the future uh, be an alternative to using LoRa's. So anyway, that was it for today's video. I hope you found these 3D to AI extensions useful, and I'll see you in the next one.